Welcome to episode one of How to Train, Tips and Tricks for Your Gym Workouts. I'm Barry Stephen, an experienced PT and gym owner, and in this series we will be diving deep into the world of fitness, sharing insights and providing valuable tips to help elevate your gym game. Whether just starting your fitness journey or a seasoned gym goer looking to take your workouts to the next level, this vlog is for you. Join me as we explore various training methods, movement variations and lifting techniques that will not only improve your strength and performance, but also help you make the most out of your time in the gym. Throughout this series, I'll be sharing my own workouts, demonstrating proper form and technique and providing on-point guidance on how to execute exercises effectively. So get ready to break a sweat, challenge yourself and unlock your full potential as this vlog is here to support and guide you every step of the way. Oh, so what's our workout today? So today we're going to focus on deadlifts. Um, we're going to go four sets of six on deadlifts and hopefully give you guys some little hints and tips how to improve your deadlifts. Then we've got flat dumbbell chest press. So we're doing a full body routine. So we're going to cover all muscle groups. There's going to be six exercises. So deadlifts, flat dumbbell chest press, plate loaded row is the main back exercise. We're going to do 45 degree hip extensions for glutes and hamstrings. Dumbbell lateral raise, and I think a dumbbell skull crusher for triceps. So yeah, six movements: four up, four upper body, two lower body. That are mostly focusing on hip extension, but later in the, the week we'll we'll do a little bit more knee knee flexion based movements and squats and things like that. So yeah, a bit of everything. Yesterday we were climbing Glen Clover Meyer, which is a uh, Munro down near Kirimuir. I'm actually feeling a little bit on the tender side today, so we'll see how today goes. But with a wee warm up, should should all be fine. And Emma's going to train with me, aren't you, Emma? Yeah. Looking forward to it. And we've got the boys with us. They're going to help us with a little bit of filming. Am I right, boys? Yeah. So it's a big family effort for today's workout. Oh. Here we go. Let's get the lights on. Jim's looking nice and clean. Right, we're going to reach for the ceiling, drop down, touch the toes, hold for a couple of seconds, squat down, hold that position, lifting the chest up, and then we're going to reach our left arm up, right arm up. Both arms up, stand, circle round, and then we're going to go again. So we're going to do a couple of stretch flows just to warm up for this workout. It's quite a good way to warm up because it covers a few different movements. It doesn't take that long. It gets in all your tight spots. Getting a good bit of mobility and a little bit of strength just before you start as well. And then both arms up, and we'll do that one more time. We're getting a bit looser. Last one, touch the toes, drop down. Left arm goes up. Try and rotate round as well. A wee bit stiff today. And up, and relax. Right, we'll drop down onto the floor, our second one. We're gonna go into what we call the spider, which is left foot round the side. We're gonna try and drop that elbow down, touching the floor. Reach round for the ceiling, really open up your chest a little bit, you might feel that in your hips. Back to the floor, push into a downward dog, so hips up, 
and the heels down and then bring that right foot round the side drop the elbow reach round and then we repeat back into the downward dog and then we're about to start again we'll do that two more times so elbow to the floor and round and you can speed this up as you go through it as well as you feel yourself warming up a few creaks and cracks one more each side and round push back last one and relax there I'll get you warming up with the tens da, da, da. so the first tip that we're going to give you with these deadlifts is get rid of the shoes or if you have a pair of trainers or a pair of shoes that are really flat then they're probably going to be pretty good to use but as much as these are really good trainers for being in the gym and good for running etc they're not going to be as good for deadlifts as I would be going barefoot or in my socks. A um, couple of reasons for that. One is when you're wearing your trainers, the range of motion is, is greater, okay? And when you take the trainers off, the bar is obviously closer to your finished position, so range of motion is a little bit shorter. So it does actually give you a little bit of a benefit when you're trying to lift heavy weights from the floor. Um, but probably more importantly is just the feel and the connection you get when you're doing deadlifts. If you're wearing your trainer, it's quite spongy. Um, you might lose balance a little bit. You might roll onto the front of your foot. Um, and you just don't really get a really good connection with the ground. Whereas when you go barefoot or really flat soled shoes, you can get a, a better connection with the ground, a better feeling with the ground. Um, I like doing it with the shoes off because I really like to feel the, the ground and grip the floor and it, it in turn helps you engage your legs better and use your, your hip muscles, your glutes, your hamstrings better. Um, so yeah, for performance, let's do away with them. So guys, we're going through a little warm-up set. With the warm-up sets, you don't want to start too heavy. But you also don't want to start super, super light either. You end up doing heaps and heaps of warm-up sets. So I'm just starting with 60, which is for today probably about 40, 40% 40 of what I'll end up lifting. A couple more. I usually do my first set around about 10 reps, 10 to 12 reps, really focusing on all the little technique tips and the execution points that I want to put into all the other sets. So although it's the lightest of sets, don't want to go through the motions. You want to, you want to start lifting with your best form right from the, right from the start. It's good. It's probably one of the key things that I say a lot to my clients when they're deadlifting is keep the bar close to you. This is quite a common thing, especially with sort of beginner to intermediates, is that they'll let that bar drift away from their body, especially at the bottom. And you see good deadlifters normally end up scraping their shins and getting a little bit of blood on, on their legs. I'm not suggesting you do that, but if you want to get good at deadlifting, you want that weight to feel light when you're lifting it, keep it really close to you. Otherwise it becomes quite difficult. So guys, I've done a couple of warm-up sets. We're built up to um, my first work, working set, which is going to be 100 kilograms for six reps. I want to really emphasize foot and hand position, all right? Because having your feet and your hands in the right position can make a huge difference to your deadlift. You don't really want to have your feet too wide. And quite commonly, people will set up a little bit wider uh, just naturally, um, especially if you're new to it. 
um, and you're sort of thinking about your squat stance and things like that. The wider you go for a conventional deadlift, the, the less sort of power you're going to get pushing through the floor. Um, so you do want to bring your feet in so that they're directly underneath your hips. Um, a good little thing to, to talk to you about is if I jump in the air from, say, that position, so I go down, I jump up, I can get so high. But if I bring my feet just underneath my hips, a little bit narrower, I can get higher, all right? So there's more power going to be produced having your feet a little bit narrower. Um, personally, I, I like to have the toes pointing straight forward, and I use these little shiny bits on the bar as a good indicator of where to put my feet. Then I'll always have my hands on the outside of, of my feet. So it's quite a nice compact lifting position, um, but it's really, really effective. So if I've got really close to the bar, feet underneath the hips, toes pointing forward, hands just to the outside of my, my knees, that there is a better sort of lifting technique for me and for most of us than say that would be with a sort of wider stance. All right. I know you probably see, maybe seen like strong men and things like that, big, big guys with big wide stances, but these guys are massive, you know what I mean? They're tall, they're wide, they kind of have to go a bit wider, but for little people like me, um, you, want, you want the feet more tucked in, all right? So, left foot goes in, it goes really close to the bar, I don't want to be too far away from it. Right foot goes in, and I grip the floor with my feet, and I'm starting to get a connection with the ground. Then from there, I'm thinking about hip hinging, already getting into that perfect position, and then gripping the bar. I'm not quite in the best position yet. I need to pull myself back and under so that my shoulders are back. I've got a nicer angle to, to lift from, and then from there, I'll push and pull. Okay. I think that was six. <laughs> so yeah, foot position really, really important. Nice and narrow, nice and compact. Hand position, just a little bit wider. And then I sort of gave you a little tip there. Pull, push, and pull. So they're the three things that I say to myself if every single rep that I'm doing the deadlift. The first pull is you setting up. You're pulling yourself under the bar or you're pulling yourself into the bar and you're getting everything nice and tight. The push is you're pushing through the floor. You're, you're pushing the ground away. You're pushing the earth away, whatever you want to think about. And then this, the last pull is when you get to here, your bar's just come past your knees. You're pulling your hips to the bar or you're driving your hips to the bar, okay? So pull, push, pull, or pull, push, drive. Say these things in your head and it'll give you a really good focus when you're doing deadlift. Right, then, that's your go. I haven't lost the plot and I'm about to show you a deadlift from the knees, but I actually want to emphasize something which I was kind of touching on when I said pull, push, pull, the first part of the pull. You want to pull the slack of the bar. So in there, there's a little, there's a little bit of room for the bar to basically move inside uh, the disc, all right, where you where you put the bar, the discs on the bar, all right, um, and you want to you want to basically tighten that up before you start lifting. So if you don't, it sounds a bit like this at the start of every rep, okay, and that's good feedback to suggest that you haven't pulled the slack of the bar, you haven't got tight, and you're actually losing some strength and energy at that part in the lift. You're maybe using the, having to overcompensate by using the arms somewhat or the, or the back muscles. You're not really recruiting through the legs 
And if you don't pull the slack of the bar and get that tension to start, you're probably not going to get that push element either into the floor. So this would be me pulling the slack of the bar and then lifting. So pull nice and tight and lift. And you can see there's not a lot of sound when I did that lift. Whereas if I don't pull the slack of the bar, you can, you can feel the difference, all right? So I'm gonna do the second set, 120 kilos, six reps. I'm really gonna focus on pulling the slack of the bar, pushing through the floor with my feet and then driving my hips to the bar. So Emma's going to demonstrate something here with head position, all right? Okay. I mean, I don't often see people put their head up as much as that. Pop your eyes forward a little bit, but quite often we'll have deadlifters in that position, okay? Now, Emma, keep your head in that position, but stand up and straighten your whole body out. So you wouldn't really want to go walking about like this all day with your head back and your your chin up, it'd be quite uncomfortable for those neck muscles after a while. And in some cases, the head can be up even more uh, when we're doing deadlifts. So go back down in that deadlift position with your head up, okay? Instead, I want you to tuck that chin in and I want you to look at that weight plate just in front of you there. And that gives you a perfect angle on the neck and the upper back. And go, pull, push, and pull. Good. And pull the slack of the bar. You'll notice that rep, you didn't pull the slack of the bar because I could hear it. So that was better. That was good. So just keep doing that for the remain, remaining reps. You'll feel your legs working a bit harder. It's good, Emma. Good head position. Keep that chin tucked in. Well done. So guys, it's going to be the last set. It's going to do 130 for six today. Not really pushing, pushing. Um, it's more, more or less week, week one of the program. All right, one, one to two. I did a wee intro week last week. Um, so first set with chalk. I didn't use chalk for the first few sets. Didn't really need it. Um, I like to add things in as it's getting heavier. So I'm not gonna use a belt today, but had we maybe be going heavier into the lower rep ranges, probably would have added a belt at some stage as well. So I'm a big fan of not using all these little aids too quickly in the workout or in the program and just building them in once you sort of need them, all right? And um, so here goes for the last set. Four sets of six, done. Right guys, we're gonna go on to the second exercise, which is gonna be flat dumbbell chest press. I'm gonna cover a couple of little technique things with Emma. So Emma, if you go nice and flat on the bench, but put your arms up into the air. So what we wanna kinda of try and avoid is to be like completely flat on the bench. So if you show me like quite flat on the bench and 
we don't want our shoulders to be away from the bench like that okay so if you start pressing in that position you know, from that position that's it just start moving the arms good there's not a lot of like stability here at the shoulder when we have the shoulder in this position here and you're sort of stand there just lying flat on the bench so what we need to do is we need to activate a lot of these muscles around about the shoulder our back muscles our lats the muscles around the, around our shoulder joint they all come into play in a chest press and they help us use our chest muscles better um, while keeping it safer so what i want emma to do is i want her to drive those shoulders back and down into the bench so that she feels some contact with the back of her shoulder almost with the bench and even more so if you could pull your shoulder blades together and get that tension in the upper back now what that might have done or should have done it should have created a little bit of an, an arch okay that allows her to get those muscles in here activated and gives her a much stable base of support to press so if you press from there okay and as she's pressing Quite common will get people into this really nice strong position but at the top of one or two of the reps they'll come out like this and then it's difficult to get them back into that position so you want to get that position almost shortening your arms and maintain it as you go through okay now this will create a little bit of an arch here but contrary to what, to what you might think you're not putting a whole heap of stress on these lower back muscles you're actually benefiting heaps more from the shoulder muscles all right so if you do feel pain in this position in your lower back, then all you need to do is maybe tighten up your core a little bit and flatten that a little bit more than what we've suggested, but still aiming to keep all that stability in there. All right, so Emma, set up. Let me come. Oops. She's gonna go with the tens, and Emma's gonna do a set of 10 for us to finish that one. All right, so she's gonna try and get that position as best she can, and then she's gonna work from there. That's good. Five. Now what I want Emma to do, I'm just noticing that, keep going Emma, as she's pressing up, she's almost pressing forward, and I want her to press slightly back, okay? So I want you to come down where you were, but as you press up, I want her to be more over her shoulder at the top not her, her chest or her stomach, but actually her shoulder. At the bottom, in line with the chest, is perfect. One more, and relax. It's good, and then up. Well done. Nice, safe way to get into your sets. Pop the dumbbells on your knees, if you're on your own. If you've got people with you, there's maybe other ways that you can, you can get the dumbbells into position, um, and it's, it's always helpful if you've got a spotter. But if you're on your own, I would get them on your knees, 90 degree angle here, nice and tight, roll back, keep the knees up so you're in position, everything's really tight in this position and safe, and then all you've got is a little press to the top and then feet driving into the floor, and then I want to get that position that I just talked about a wee second ago with Emma. Now the shape I'm trying to create when I'm doing this movement is the shape of a rainbow. This is what I say anyway, a rainbow. So you're at the top of the rainbow here. You're gonna come down evenly both sides to the bottom of the, the rainbow here, okay? Now that might get you a little bit wider than what a lot of people do, which is here, okay? But if you can get your bottom position there, you're gonna feel that in the chest a good bit more than you will if you keep the dumbbells in nice and tight. You don't wanna to go too wide that it becomes a little bit unsafe, obviously, but you wanna get that optimal position. So think of that rainbow, control it down. And then when you're finished, knees up, and we're done. Could be warm up set. Let's start working hard. Final working set. She's set up really well at the shoulders. She's trying to work on that rainbow shape. You should notice that the forearms should always be vertical. Elbow underneath the wrist at all times. 
That's good. She's got a little bit better now with the path of the dumbbells. And she's working away fine. Try and control those last few reps. That's good, Emma. Keep it going. I think you'll get two more. Come on. One more. Well done, well done. Safely out. Excellent. Good job. She even puts them away. Right for the last set, we're on to our last working set of flat dumbbell press. What I'm going to focus on is when I get to the top of the rep, I don't want to lose tension through the chest. Okay, sometimes we'll get to the top of the rep and we'll think, oh, that's a little bit of a rest spot. That's a spot where you can get even more progress. You can get more tension through those muscles. All right, that's, that's an important part of the, the lift. So we're setting our shoulders. We're in a really good, strong position. We're pulling the dumbbells down to the bottom. We're getting that big stretch on the pecs. We're pressing all the way back to the top, but I really want to focus on Engaging those chest muscles right from here. Push, 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 squeezing those chest muscles all the way to the top. And maybe not letting the arm go completely straight where I will lose a little bit of tension and feeling. Instead, keeping a little bend at the elbow and really focusing on pressing my chest inwards into the center, okay? Um, and I'll try and do that with this set so that it's a really, really good working set. This set is only for six reps, so. I did it. Whew. Good set. I had a good focus on that set all the way through. Felt like there was good tension all the way through the movement at the bottom and the top. And the last little thing worth mentioning is your feet and your legs. Okay, so although we're doing an upper body exercise, it doesn't make any sense for, for me to be doing it like this with my legs out or my legs up or just sort of kind of split stance on the legs, loose with the legs. You're so much more stable and stronger when your legs are helping you involved. So once I'd sort of racked, turn racked, the, the dumbbells got in a position, I drove my feet into the floor, pushing down through my left heel, down through my right heel, really driving into the ground engaging all the leg muscles, especially the glutes, the glutes will fire up. You might even feel like you want to lift your hips up, but that's just letting you know that you're using all those muscles for stability. But keep the hips down, and then when we're here, you've got that stability and strength through shoulders and the hips with your legs driving into the floor. And it just makes that a bit, little bit stronger than say being loose here and loose here, and just dumbbell pressing like that. Loads of tips guys, apply them. If you thought they were good, comment below and let us know. Woo! It's good Emma. Nice. So what you'll notice with Emma here is she's got like a consistent movement speed as she pulls and as she returns. So like the speed is quite smooth and it's consistent both ways. Last two. This is like a really good tip for most people in the gym. Just keeping your reps at steady pace. If you're a more advanced lifter, then obviously you can think about 
doing tempos and all sorts of things. But for your sort of beginner to intermediate, keep it nice and steady. How is that, Emma? Good. Good? Right. I'm going to show you a little tip on how to make this exercise even more effective. So I do really like the plate loaded row. Um, all our, all, most of our kit, oops, most of our kit is from Watson Gym Equipment, which I find is a very, very good brand to use because they use good quality and they really make things uh, that, that work really, really well. Um, and we've had a lot of this stuff for like 10 plus years. They're still in perfect condition. This bit of kit, I really like because it gives you a bit of stability with uh, the pad and you can really focus on isolating your lats, sort of mid to upper back muscles and you get a really good workout through that area. Um, little tip, sometimes when we're on here, it's quite uncomfortable when you're in this position. Okay, especially when you're wanting to try and maybe reach a little bit further and get more of a stretch on the lats uh, and the back of the shoulder at the start of the rep. So to combat that, we can just use these little pads or anything similar to that. And we just put that in position there. Probably need that to come out just, just the one. Right, so into position here. What this is doing is it's increasing my range of motion so that I'm al it's allowing me to really stretch and reach for the, for the reps, whereas they were a little bit shorter before. And it's giving that little bit of comfort there on the sternum, on the chest bone, okay? So if you have got this bit of kit and you're using the middle handle, reach for the top corners here so that you're really getting it at the, the furthest away point and not here. Also, when you pull it in, it just feels a little bit too much work for the forearm if you take it on the bottom half. So I'll go right to the top, one, two, get myself in position and then slide down. And then from there, so I'm trying to position myself at a slight angle as well so that I'm not completely straight and upright. I'm leaning forward ever so slightly. And that's giving me more range of motion and just making those muscles work harder when they get to the back here. And then to avoid sort of pulling up into this position, I'm thinking about taking my elbows to my pockets. And that's just keeping everything in good position, good posture. And the intention in the right ears. <laughs> right, guys, last set on here. We're going to go for 12 reps. Really focus on getting a really good squeeze in at this position. I'm going to try and hold each, each rep for one second here as well in the hardest position. So just like adding in a little isometric into the movement. Right, here we go. and the facials are for free. So we're doing lat raises now. Emma's getting her weights ready. So Emma says that I'm not allowed to video the 
two, two of the last three exercises because she's got a chicken in the oven and <laughs> she's worried that it's going to burn. So we just had to rattle through one or two exercises. So we decided to pick dumbbell lateral raise. Emma, I want you to do some lateral raises. I'm just going to go over a couple of things. Good. So it's a pretty straightforward exercise, isn't it? Um, but it still is done kind of badly at times. And one of the key things that people tend to get wrong is they straighten their elbows. So straighten your arm out and they do it like that. Do a couple of reps like that. That's going to reduce the tension on the area we want to work. And it's going to cause a little bit of strain there in the elbow. So always remember, elbow's slightly bent. Having said that, you don't really want to keep your arms quite short. You want to think you're an aeroplane and really lengthen your arms like the wings of an aeroplane. And that's going to help keep a really long neck and it's going to stop you from recruiting your traps. So if you go quite short with the arms and almost like shrug it up as you're doing it, and that is another sort of thing that some people may do because they're a bit weaker here and they're obviously quite strong here and they're starting to use those muscles. So I bet those ones are starting to feel heavy now, yeah? Yeah? Well, it's not Keep going. Like that. Keep going. Um, so yeah, long arms, long neck. Think about that aeroplane. A little bend the elbow. And the last thing I want you to do, um, I imagine there are two bottles of water, okay? As you get to the top, just slightly pour a bit of water out. But don't do it at the top, just do it as you're doing it. Yeah, so it's like one fluent motion. So when she gets to the top, she's just slightly turning the dumbbells so that the water's rolling out the bottle. And that's just increasing tension on the so guys, putting all that into practice, a little bend the elbow, long neck, thinking about the aeroplane, thinking about those water bottles, slight turnout of the water at the top. It should give you a really good workout on the shoulders and just give you something to focus on rather than just doing something like that. Now I could use momentum, but I want to work harder than that. The only time to bring momentum in is maybe at the end of the set when you're struggling to keep strict form and you can still get a few extra reps but doing it well. I've probably got two more. Where a little bit of momentum has helped me get those extra reps at the end of the set. Done. And probably the best tip you're going to take away from this, this video is when you're done lifting, put your stuff away. Put your weights away. Because if you don't put them away, then somebody else has got to put them away, which is eating into their workout time, time that they don't have. And uh, it's, it's, it's creating a culture where people just don't put their weights away. Um, and you want to keep your gym nice and clean, nice and tidy. And uh, it's a better place to train. So put your weights away. So guys, that is episode one of this vlog. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Hopefully you've taken in some good information that you can put into your workouts. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, me coaching Emma, Emma lifting a few weights. If you did enjoy it, you liked it, you took something from it, or you're gonna use this in your workouts, let us know, comment below, like it, share it, subscribe, do all of above, all right? I really appreciate anyone that's taken time to watch the whole video. And we'll be back next week with another video giving you great content. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. If you like this content, please let me know. Comment below so I can continue to make more videos and help more people. 
Until next time, keep pushing, keep grinding and remember, the only bad workout is the one you didn't do. If you have any exercises you want me to cover or training methods you want more information on, just let me know.